so it switches there we go so actually I'm gonna move the headshot out of the way so you can see what I mean Let's move there okay so we go from one second all you see is the background with uh, the animation of Sam one second to four second bam his head comes flying off and his head is removed from the background so that's what we have so the head is the top layer um, the background mask is the second layer and the background which is trimmed off at four seconds is the bottom layer okay so now here comes the fun part what we have to do is <clears throat> basically stop Sam's head from moving around after it gets cut off and it'd be pretty cool for like you know a really nice zombie shot where you know the head would still be you know moving around after it's you know been cut off but you know Sam is a living guy so when when his head's gone it's gone he's he's dead it's not gonna be moving anymore so uh, you notice his head's still going all over the place so what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna click on headshot and they're gonna right click and we're going to go to time enable time remapping remapping and it sets a keyframe for the time of the of, of the animation and zero frames and the very last frame beginning and last frames so what we're gonna do oh, oh, excuse me and if you click on like the last frame and the last keyframe and you bring it in you're gonna actually compress the animation so where it's at now this is actually still saying six seconds but it's compressing uh, the animation of Sam's head into that you know four second frame so anyway I'm going to move the keyframe back and at the four second mark I'm gonna go over here to the very end of the keyframe where it has these two arrows uh, one's for a previous keyframe the other ones go to next keyframe in the middle is to add or remove keyframe so it's a little diamond shape I'm going to click on that it's going to turn a little yellowish and it sets a keyframe and this is going to basically hold uh, the frame for us so all I have to do is go here to the very last keyframe click on it delete it and after effects is going to say okay this animation goes all the way up to four seconds and after four seconds it stops there's no other frames after four seconds except for that frame the uh, um, it's just holding a spot uh, placeholder I guess you could call it so you see Sam's head headshot animation isn't moving so that's what we want so his head's gonna be flying off somewhere now what we want to do is we are actually going to mask off Sam's head and seeing as how that's going to uh, take a few moments and it's going to be a pain in the butt so well not real pain but it'll just be really boring so I'm going to pause and with the magic of uh, YouTube time warp I'm going to be back in just a second for you guys but for me it'll be um, a few minutes okay I'll be back okay I'm back and I've got the uh, uh, mask of uh, Sam's head done and uh, I can't remember I don't think I showed you guys uh, how to do an animated uh, mask before which actually we're gonna be doing that I'm gonna be doing that next anyway um, <clears throat> so I've, I've got the mask for the headshot set up and I'm going to hide the headshot and let's see here don't hide the background yeah I can hide the background okay and I'm gonna click on the background mask and we still have a mask here um, for his head and I'm going to turn on the background I'm just going to lengthen the background because I kind of kind of want to see what I'm doing here uh, so I'm going to click on the background take the transparency and bring it down a little bit because <clears throat> I still want to see what's going on behind the mask um, so I'm going to lock that layer and go to background mask and select the mask I'm going to do an animated mask with this one so first I'm going to get it set up before I do any uh, um, keyframing so what I'm going to do is uh, after I got uh, my, my uh, points laid out I'm going to click on the pen tool click and hold or just yeah click and hold go to convert vertex tool and you should get like this little weird um, okay I have it selected that's weird there we go 
and you get this like little upside down V thingy when you go over uh, one of the points. And basically what this will do, if you click on it and pull out, it will create the little handles for your Bezier curves. And you want to do that. Because if you don't do this before you start animating, you will actually, every time you uh, click on a, on a, a frame to keyframe it, you're going to have to redo all your, all your um, pulling out all your curve handles. Now you can actually move, well, let's, let's select an arrow, and you can grab one of the handles, and you can move the handles, and it'll be like a, a seesaw or teeter-totter where the one goes up, the other one goes down. Well, if you want a little bit more control and you want to move one handle at a time, you know, just, just select your um, point there, grab the uh, control vert, um, uh, convert vertex tool, and just grab one of the uh, um, handles, and you'll be able to manipulate just that one handle. Or if you want the handles to completely disappear uh, using the uh, convert vertex tool, just simply click on the point, and the uh, the handles just disappear. So let me put those back there. Okay, and I'm going to go down to the background mask, hit M twice real fast to bring up our uh, mask attributes, and I'm just going to click the stopwatch next to the mask path. And from this point, I'm going to go up, you know, half a second. And oh, actually, let me start at the very beginning, and I'm going to uh, um, adjust my points here. Whoop. Uh, actually, yeah, what I'm, I'm going to do something else first because it'll it'll make everything a little, little bit easier uh, easier on me. There's two ways you can go here. You can actually um, animate your mask all the way through, animate all the points, or you can actually uh, use some point on uh, on the body here and uh, track it, get the tracking data, apply it to your mask, um, and so the mask will actually move with the body. So all you have to do is just adjust uh, the points, and um, in some aspects that that would be easier. Uh, some aspects it would be harder. Uh, are more pain in the butt to do than just simply, you know, animating um, your mask. Um, so I, th I think I think I'll do the tracking uh, with that, uh, so I can show you, you know, the harder, the even harder route to go, uh, which is always good because, um, you know, the more difficulty that I show you how to do it, it makes it easier, a lot easier, and you're getting how to do it e the easy way, and and with showing being able to see how to do it, doing it har the hard way. Um, you'll easily be able to do it the easy way because all the instructions. The, any, forget it. Never mind. I'm confusing myself. Okay, so I'm going to uh, um, you know track his his little button here, and I think I'll I, I think I'll you know I'm, I'm not going to pause for this one because I I still got like four minutes, and it shouldn't take four minutes. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the uh, background which has his button there. So I'm going to uh, duplicate the background and I'm going to name it come on enter. I'm going to name it tracker and I'm going to bring it to the top and I'm going to create a new null object and I'm going to attach the tracking uh, data to that. And I'm going to go to my menus, hit motion tracking, um, tracking controls. I'm going to select my tracker animation um, and track motion. I'm going to motion source. It's going to be uh, tracker, which is the animation tracker. Current track, track one. I'm going to use position, and that should be all set. And I'm just going to drag the box. I'm going to use his button because that seemed uh, like a good bright spot that you know should easily be trackable. And size that down, and I got three minutes, and so I'm going to track. Eh, hey, excellent! I think that's the cleanest track I've ever gotten uh, while doing tracking. <laughs>